so let's see. Uh, this is absolutely awesome that we're joined today by Lieutenant General John Shaw, the, uh, the Deputy Commander of Space Command. So we all know Space Command, the combatant command responsible for conducting operations in, from, and to space, deterring conflict and defeat aggression. So no small, no small task. Deliver space combat power for the joint force and defend US's interest in the same. So Lieutenant General Shaw entered the Air Force in 1990. I just think this one part's kind of cool. So from the Air Force Academy with a degree in astronautical engineering, so he's a fellow rocket scientist, and a minor in Russian language. That always, I find, very impressive and intimidating. Um, let's see, served in a variety of air and space operations and staff positions, including operations, the National Reconnaissance Office, and the Space Warfare Center. His operational commands have included the 4th Space Operations Squadron, 50th Op Space Operations Group, and the 21st Space Wing, STRATCOM as the director of the Commander's Action Group, Deputy Director of Ops, uh, and in the Pentagon, even as an Air Force intern, on and on and on. So let's see, uh, dual had it before at, as the commander of the Combined Forces Space Component Command, Space Command, Deputy Commander of Space Operations Command. He was out at Vandenberg Air Force Base and it was also the Deputy Commander of the Air Force Space Command when it was still just part of the Air Force. Um, so sir, I think the floor is yours. Yeah, it's been kind of, kind of a long day. It started out at 7 a.m. Uh, at about a level three for me with the meeting at the Pentagon for 90 minutes. And then another meeting with the Pentagon later on. But it got better and better because I got closer to this event. And now that I'm here, I'm going to close out at championship level at a nine. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I'm sure of it. It's good to be here. Um, despite what I just said, and you think I heard everything, I did not know what happened here today. And I'm sure you heard words of brilliance from all the panels. I got caught a little bit of the last one there. So there's no way. So what do I possibly say here that, that might that endangers possibly being contradictory, especially to that Chiefs panel. That must have been awesome, <laughs> right? Uh, and so I can't wait till the Q&A so you can ask me, hey, what you said, that's in direct con contradiction to the brilliant words that General Leonard said earlier. Can you explain yourself? Okay, I'm ready for that, all right? Hey, what I thought I'd do, I just want to tell a couple stories of where I've seen, I think, culture evolving in my journey of service. And I think it's going to resonate with some of the things I even heard in the last panel and reference other things earlier today. And it's just meant to sort of kind of, kind of back up, reflect, get ready to go have that glass of wine, and, um, and, then, and then maybe see what's on your minds and how you react to that. So I just want to tell a couple stories. So first one goes to Mandy mentioned that I was the, in one of my previous jobs, I was the deputy commander for US uh, Air Force Space Command. That doesn't exist anymore, right? But it was a major command in the United States Air Force. And it was 2019. And it was early 2019. And this thing called Space Force had been bouncing around for a while, right? Space Corps, Space Force. And so my boss, General Raymond, calls me in as the, you know, I'm the deputy, and he says, hey, um, the Space Force thing might actually happen this year. And so I want you to pull a team together to kind of think about how, how should we organize the U.S. Space Force below the headquarters level in the Pentagon. Now, we, we had, we had uh, Major General Clint Crozier was already working on this organization in the Pentagon, and a lot of his work today is actually still there today in the, in the Pentagon. But at to, up to that point, no one had really looked at, hey, how should we, or what should the Space Force look like below the headquarters level? No, we hadn't really looked at that. And I said, okay, boss, I, I got it. And, uh, and so we called, we, we, we put the organization together and we called it Task Force Tango. Who remembers that? Gene, I know you know about it. Chief, you remember that? Tank, you came in right at the tail end of Task Force Tango. You, were, you remember that. So, and but, and, and, and we, we, you know, we sat down and, uh, uh, and we, we locked ourselves in a room and, and we said, okay, here's the task. We got to think about how we might organize. But I, I said, hey, let's think about it this way. You know, let, let's not strike with where we are today and how we might move things around, modify them or whatever. Let's just kind of think about what do we think space warfighting looks like in the year 2080? And why don't we start with that? Just try to kind of wrap our arm, our heads around that, develop a vision of where we think the Space Force needs to be in 2080. Now, you know, our pr predicting is a hard thing to do especially about the future. 
But that's what I asked the team to go do for like two days. I said, go look at this for two days. By the way, this team was not just Air Force Space folks. We brought in someone from the Navy, someone from the Army. We brought, I tried to get a kind of a diverse group to kind of think about this. And, um, and so, you know, come back a couple days later and we have another whiteboard session. I said, okay, what, what, do you, what do you think? What does it look like? And uh, they said, well, we, we're pretty sure it's going to be highly technical. It's going to happen really, really fast. We're not going to have a lot of time to make decisions the way we do today. And it's going to happen on a very, very large scale. Are you guys all really impressed by those? I mean, I probably we could have come up with that. But, you know, OK, so well, all right, yeah, uh, that makes sense. So, so now how do we organize against that? And what do we have to think about in order to prepare and get an organization organized to be able to do that? So I'm going to fast forward a little bit after a lot of sessions. What did we come up with? Well, we came up with things that actually exist today in our Space Force. We decided, you know, we probably, in this industrial age that we kind of developed in, we had too many echelons of command. We think we can get rid of a couple. So we proposed that, and we made a rationale for why we should do that. And uh, fast forward, that's where we are today, folks, right? We don't have 206 group levels anymore, and we don't have a numbered Air Force anymore. So that was pretty, um, that was pretty, uh, uh, and I think, I think it's working. I'd be curious to see what you think. But the idea was, how am I relating this back to culture? Think about where you need to be. And let that now inform the kinds of things you do. And from an organizational perspective and that culture, we've actually flattened it. And it's also where, and I know you, some of you talked earlier today about um, at least mission command and empowerment and such. That's where that idea came from. We're, we're going to have to be able to move fast. We're going to need guardians to be able to have the authority and be empowered to make decisions at the lowest possible level to be able to move faster than an adversary. It was also, by the way, out of that task force tango that we came up with, hey, let's just start with three field commands. Uh, yeah, that was actually absurdly simple, too. It was, uh, what does the Space Force need to do? Well, it needs to organize, train, equip. OK, well, how about three organizations? One that organizes, one that or force, you know, gets its forces um, and for, op for operations. Uh, one that actually trains guardians, uh, that would be STARCOM, and then one that actually equips, which is SSC as it exists today. Probably going to go to a fourth, but that's how we start with those three. So I thought I'd share that story, a little bit of where we came from as Space Force, why we have some things in place the way we do today, and how that is probably, well, do we realize or not, has already begun to shape the culture of the force based on some early questions we asked about where do we need to be in the future in 2080. Okay, so that would be one way to look at it. How do you think about success from an organizational perspective? What do you need to be to be successful? What do you need to be to win? Now think about it from a, um, how do you actually uh, think about what you're charged to do? I heard some of that happen at the very, at the very end of the last panel as well. How do you, uh, what was it, uh, uh, break the rules? So somehow they came up earlier, I caught the end of it. How do you break the rules? Yeah, you need to break the rules. How do you find ways to bend your environment to your will in order to win and succeed? Don't accept it for what it is, bend it. So one of the ways that we're trying to do that, I'm just giving the example now, contemporary one, we're actually doing this today at US Space Command. Some of you have probably already heard about this, is we're really, really, we're coming to the realization, we're questioning hard, the way we've actually always flown satellites. We're doing it wrong, right? I'll give you a quick recap what I'm talking about. And this is just an example of how to be really thinking, you know, we do need to think about, I think when you, I think when you back up, most of you will say, you know what, we do need to think about that. Why, did, why aren't we thinking more about that? So ever since we first started launching satellites, we, we launch them into these wonderful things called orbits, right? And they're great, right? It's a beautiful thing that we have in the space domain that doesn't really exist in the other domains. I can put something in, in, in the position above the Earth and it will stay there in that orbit. Yeah, it can be moving pretty fast relative to the ground, but it stays in that orbit and it's nice, it's wonderful. It's a terrific invention of physics. Um, but if you think about it, it's really positional, right? We just put it there, very predictable. 
right? And actually, and we don't use a whole lot of energy in the lifetime of a satellite to move it around, whether repositioning or just station keeping or such, we don't. We, we've actually been doing positional space operations from the beginning of the space age. Now, if you think back in military history, when has positional operations actually been superior to maneuver operations? Uh, all right, if you really wanted to get it, maybe forts were good at one time, you know, um, but, but it only is really a short time. Now, usually the, 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 usually the competitor that can maneuver in the face of a positional adversary usually got quite an advantage. So how do we change this? How do we stop doing positional space operations and go to s sustained s maneuver operations or dynamic space operations is what we're calling it, U.S. Space Command. Oh, well, what we do is we don't leave satellites in their same orbits all the time. We're changing them all the time. 